Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. This is my mock interview. My client Colleen, a little background behind her is that she's in her mid-30s. She has a daughter that is about to turn 10. Um, she struggles with depression and is self-medicating with drugs and alcohol, mainly cocaine. Um, so we're here to talk about that today and see how we can assist her. Hi, Colleen. Hi. So just to let you know, we're just going to go over confidentiality. So anything and everything that is talked about today in session is confidential, except if you try to hurt yourself or somebody else, I have to break that confidentiality. Okay. Okay, so if you understand that, I'm just going to have you sign this. Okay. Okay. No okay. Problem. Also, boundaries between me and you is um, I'm going to be using motivational interviewing today. So with that, that means that we are going to kind of explore what you want to make as goals and collaboratively with your goals in mind and with my support we're going to see what you want to work on and continue going through that with therapy. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, if you do need anything, I will give you my office phone. I will not be giving you my personal cell phone. This is me setting my boundaries and I want to make sure that you understand that if any emergency does arise, you can either call 911 or our emergency on-call number. Okay. Okay? So, do you mind today if we talk about your drinking and drug problem along with your depression? Sure. All That's right. what I'm here for. Okay. Get some help. So, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, I work full-time. I'm a single mom. She's about to be 10. I've been a single mom, you know, basically since she was born. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my alcohol and drug use kind of started... A little bit before her, my teenage years, my parents were going through some hard times, you know, got divorced, so that was kind of like a big mess back then. And then after having my daughter at such a young age and being a single parent, it's kind of just been spiraling, spiraling, spiraling out of control, I feel <laughs> like, ever since the last like, year or so. Um, so what makes you think that you need to change? Well, I'm a you know, I'm a professional, I work, you know, a professional job, and I have a child. I can't keep doing this, can't keep living like this. Okay. Um, what will happen if you don't change? I'm fearful that my life will just, you know, become more out of control, lose my job, lose my daughter maybe, just, you know, or die, basically, I guess. What makes you think it might be a time for a change? Well, I'm about to be 35, so I'm a little too old to keep acting like this. Okay, so can you tell me more about when this all first began? Yeah, it first began when I was 17, you know, mm -hmm. in high school, senior, drinking and partying with friends, and mm -hmm. I tried cocaine for the first time, and, like, I was just hooked. Don't get me wrong, I've had periods where I stop and can, you know, function, so I know I'm able to do this. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of having somebody there to help me and, you know, enforce that, like, I can do this again. And then the last few years, it's kind of just been, I've just been so depressed with life, like, not making enough money, just having this pressure on me all the time to do better, be a better mom, and I just feel like such a failure, so I've just been ignoring everything, basically. What is different about quitting this time? I just feel like I really want it. You know, I really want to be sober. I want to get my depression under control. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I just feel like it's definitely the time. I just feel it in my in my heart that now's right. Mm -hmm. Many people report feeling the way you do, and they find it very difficult. So that's completely normal. Yeah. Um, it's clear that you're really trying to change your drug and alcohol problem for more or less your daughter along with yourself. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me why it's different quitting this time compared to all the last attempts? I think, it, well, because my daughter is so much older now, and she's going to remember things now versus then when she was like two or three. Um, and I just don't want her to remember her mom being an idiot, you know, and just not being there enough for her and not taking the time to do things with her and stop spending like every Saturday in bed, hungover, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and I just don't want to be that person anymore. I want to have fun with her and don't want her to remember anything like this. 
So what would be the good things about changing your risky behavior of doing drugs and drinking alcohol? The good things? Mm -hmm. um, I'll be more in tune with my family, you know, like more present and not so sad and like out of it and have more money. That'll be for sure. <laughs> because <laughs> that's part of my issue. I'm like, oh, I'm so broke. Oh, maybe if you weren't out drinking and partying every other weekend, you'd have more money. Um, you know, and I think overall I'll be happier and everybody else will be happier. Mm -hmm. So I get the sense that you're wanting to change and you have concerns about your drinking and drug problem. Um, but I also have a feeling that there's a lot of pressure on you, um, that you're you really want to do this, but you're, you know, find it difficult because of your past attempts. Right. Um, so can you tell me some of the good things about doing drugs and drinking? Oh, well, gosh, it's always fun, you know, just you're laughing and giggling and, mm -hmm. um, you don't feel the things that, you know, you don't want to be feeling. So it's kind of like that's why I use that stuff is to not feel all the bad things. I, I have bad coping skills, let's put it that way. I can't okay. cope. Mm -hmm. So can we're going to talk about the flip side. So what are some less of the good things that are from the drugs and the drinking? Um, well, when you wake up feeling like shit the next day, I hate that. Okay. And then you look at your bank account and you're like, oh, damn, why did I do that? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, family being mad at you, friends being mad at you because you're not a good friend anymore because you're off doing bad things, so you're not a good friend because you don't want to face their realities. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah, then reality, you wake up to reality and you're like, shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to feel this again. So it sounds like, you know, you know, the good and the bad of both, you know, the bad being, you know, you don't feel like you're present all the time for your daughter, family, and friends. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, you kind of feel like a failure. Yeah. But you enjoy getting that high, for, mm -hmm. per se, because it lets you kind of suppress everything and live in the moment. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, all in all, what would you say your best motivation is right now to change? My daughter. Why is that? Because she's the reason I'm alive. She's the reason I live every day and wake up every day, Just, you know, to be there for her. Do you feel that you are using the drugs and the alcohol to cope with your depression? Yes. Oh, 100%. Why do you say that? Because that's my numbing factor. Those, you know, that's what I run to as soon as anything goes wrong or I feel a certain, you know, bad thing coming about. It's like, oh, let's go get drunk. Let's go get a little bit of coke then I won't have to feel any of that anymore. A lot of people feel like that. You know, that's your easy go-to coping skill mm -hmm. because it's that's something that you've been doing for so, so long. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some other coping skills that we can put into play that can, you know, um, yeah. be instead of the drugs and alcohol? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what do you enjoy doing? Um, I used to love playing tennis. High school. Okay. Uh, I used to love reading as a kid. I have not been able to get back into that. Um, I don't know. That's It's been so long, I forget. And why? You said you haven't read in such a long time. Mm -hmm. Why is that? You don't have the time or... The energy, I think. The focus. Mm -hmm. More so the focus. Mm -hmm. To just sit down and read. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, you know, tell me what you like about, you know, reading. You know, is it just kind of... Just getting lost in whatever story that you're reading. It's different, um, you know, world, different reality, just to have that escape, I guess, yeah. Okay. So, it really sounds like, you know, you do have some coping skills mm -hmm. that you haven't thought about in a while. But, you know, you kind of find them silly in a way. Yeah. Um, so what is something that you can work on in between sessions? So some type of homework, you could say. What mm. is one coping skill that you want to try in between sessions that could possibly help you when you're feeling the urge to do drugs or mm. drink? 
maybe um I don't know read I guess I don't know that's what I'm trying to uh figure out what I can do instead of running to that call a friend maybe and talk to somebody that could be a great one. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely something that you could easily do yeah. um, in between sessions. Okay. So I think that would be great homework for you. Okay. Okay? I can so, do that. All right. So there's your homework, and I will meet with you next week. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Throughout the session, I used um, asking permission, revoking change talk, um, open-ended questions, um, reflective listening, normalizing, decisional balancing, affirmations, and summaries as well. Um, I feel that the session went very well with using motivational interviewing, and I look forward to meeting her next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.